Question five. Three forces act on a particle. The first force is magnitude P, and that goes on to due east. Second, five, and is west. The third, 2P, and acts vertically upwards. The resultant of these forces has magnitude 25 newtons. Right, I feel the need for a diagram. So, three forces acting on a particle. Oops, here we are. Here's my particle. Um, P is acting due east. There's P. The second force, 5 newtons, is horizontally due west. The third force has magnitude 2P and acts vertically upwards. The resultant of these three forces has a magnitude of 25 newtons. Okay, as soon as we start talking about a resultant, I feel I want to resolve in my two directions. That's what we always do. So we're going to pick our two perpendicular directions and start resolving. If we resolve in that direction, which is due east, isn't it? Then we've got P minus 5 uh, as, as being the force in that direction. If we resolve vertically, we've got 2P as being the resultant force in the vertical direction. We've already done this kind of bit of working out. What we're now saying is that here we have 2P vertically upwards, P minus 5 in that direction, and we have a resultant force there of 25 newtons at an angle. Well, I'm going to find... Well, it... Oh, that's not the angle that we want, is it? Hang on. Oh, beautifully done. Look at that. There we go. That's the angle that we want, because the question said, calculate the angle between the resultant and the vertical. So that's the angle. Notice, by, my instinct is to, to find that angle, isn't it? But that's, that's not the angle that they asked for this time. Be careful about that. So, um, this is a Pythagoras theorem. This says that 25 squared is 2p squared plus p minus 5 squared. So, uh, 625 is 4p squared plus p squared minus 10p plus 25. Giving us 600, oh, how are we going to do this? Giving us 0 is 5p squared minus 10p minus 600. Is that right? Um, which, if we divide everything by 5, because that would seem a sensible thing to do, gives us p squared minus 2p minus 120 as our quadratic equation. Um, does it factorise? Uh, yes, it does, 10 and 12. So if we factorise that as being p minus 12, p plus 10, we get that p is 12 or minus 10. And we now need to decide which of those makes sense. Well, we were told that P acts horizontally due east. If P is minus 10, then it's not acting horizontally due east. That would be acting horizontally due west. So, so P must be the positive one. It must be 12. So there we go, P is 12 newtons. Uh, and find the angle that it makes. Well, just to clarify my little diagram that I've got here, um, that's the angle that we're looking for. I've got, what have I got here? I've got this is 24, and this is, what would it be? Uh, it is P minus 5. P minus 5 is 7. So that is 7 newtons in that direction. So that my tan of alpha is opposite over adjacent. So tan alpha is 7 over 24, uh, which gives me 16.3 degrees to three significant figures. And there is, um, that's the right angle. Yeah, so there we go.
great stuff. And that's some some. Oh no, that's only part one. <laughs> Whoa, I was getting carried away. Part two. Wow. The parts car apparently it's got mass three kilograms now and it's at rest on a rough horizontal table. The coefficient of friction between the particle and the table is 0.15. Uh, again, we've got this whole thing of it being at rest. Tells us something that's going on there. Find the acceleration of the particle and state the direction in which it moves. Okay. Um, I feel like another diagram. So I'm going to draw my diagram here. Um, we've got... We're told that the particle has mass 3, so its weight is 3g. We've got, well, all of that stuff, all this p and 2p and 5 and all of that stuff, we know about the resultant of those forces. So I'm not going to put those individual forces onto my diagram anymore. That would be crazy. I am going to just put my resultant force, which I know to be 25 newtons, and I know that it is at an angle of alpha to the horizontal, and I know that alpha is 16 point, well, it's 2602 if I want to write it to a little bit more accuracy. So that's the angle I'm working with. Now, um, looking at that, oh, there would also be a, a, a normal contact force with the table. I'm going to call it R. And looking at that diagram, I think it's pretty clear which way friction is going to go. <coughs> that would be wanting to move off in this direction, which is east, remember. So there is my frictional force in the opposite direction, resisting the motion. Okay. Um, there we go. The particle is on a rough horizontal table. Find the acceleration and state the direction in which it moves. So that's that's what's going on. That's my diagram. I need to do some resolving, don't I? I need to work out what the reaction force is, the contact force. So if I resolve vertically, I've got that R plus 25 cos alpha is equal to uh, 3g. Because it's not leaving the table. Uh, rearranging that gives me R is 5.4 newtons. It's quite nice here because cos alpha, we can actually work out cos alpha exactly, couldn't we? Because we've got we've got the diagram down here involving that. Cos alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's 24 over 25. So we can use the exact value of cos alpha, although you know it would work out well enough if you use that value. Um, Right, we've also, we know that it's, uh, it's moving, because it's moving, that tells us that friction is at its limiting value, so that means F equals mu R. We were told the coefficient of friction as being 0.15, so F is 0.15 times 5.4, so the frictional force is 0.81 and we're left now using F equals MA resolving in that direction that would be the direction of motion wouldn't it because that's the direction that, that force the friction is resisting the motion in that direction using F equals MA we've got 25 sine alpha minus 0.81 is the mass times the acceleration. 25 sine alpha, well of course, again, from our little diagram down here, sine alpha is 7 over 25. So 25 sine alpha, 25 times 7 over 25 is 7, minus 0.81 is 3a. Simplifying that gives us a is 2.06 meters per second per second and as we have said a number of times that's the direction of motion in this the question did say notice at the end there it did say state the direction in which it moves 
So we've got a direction of due east. as the direction of motion. And that, this time, is the end of the question.